Aloha. Thank you for being back with me. Aloha, Evangeline. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be with you again. We had a great response from sharing our little chat, and I think it was encouraging to a lot of people. Yes, it was. And we got some responses to nice, nice uh, responses by uh, phone calls, uh, uh, emails, messages. So it was, it was very encouraging. So, and uh, they wanted us to do more. So. Yes. So here we are, and we've got lots more to talk about. You and I were just discussing a little Facebook Live I did earlier today, and we were talking about people thinking too much and just being in their heads trying to figure everything out when feeling can be really useful. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit more with you. Yeah, that's wonderful because, uh, yeah, if we can feel with the heart, I mean, that's really what steers our dimensional selves, our interdimensional selves. We've got to be in the heart space uh, because the head uh, has limited, um, has a limited way of looking at things, as, as we know, because that's the ego part, the brain part, and the heart is able to see things in its fullness. You know, uh, just like we've talked about, uh, you know, the mind is very linear. Uh, whereas the heart is very spherical. So, and, and, and the linear nature of the mind is within the heart. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's nice if we can have a heart experience with everything that's going on. I've had a lot of practice with getting my mind blown and being wrong and figuring out certain structures and belief systems weren't necessarily what I thought they were. And so I know for some people that might not be the case, they may have thought things were a certain way. And then when other information comes in, that whole cognitive dissonance, like, you know, like I can't, I, I can't deal with my reality being different than what it is. But from a shamanic perspective, we, we roll with that all the time, don't we? Yes, we do. And, uh, you know, we have to remind ourselves or reheart ourselves that we are a multidimensional being. Uh, we live forever. So always have this mindset, this heart set, that regardless of what happens, we are always in love and we're gonna live forever. So as long as we keep that as our default, uh, that keeps all the fear stuff away. And that's what we want. We want to be, we want to have this clarity when we're able to perceive things and then put those uh, plans, those thoughts we have into action. Uh, so if we have love as our foundation, all will be well. And, and from that heart space, there's really not like good guy, bad guy, wrong, right. H how do you describe that? Because that's what I was feeling. The reason I came on and did that live video was there's no, there, there's no person that's all one way all the time. We're all of it all the time. Yes, exactly. And that's definitely a multidimensional view of who we are uh, because really we're all right remember we're one and we live forever so every single person is right because they are acting according to the information they have and according to the information to the reality they wish to create so we're all creating our reality uh, somebody is creating this reality another person creating this reality and the beauty of that is it is all intermingled and mixed with each other so we're like this beautiful beautiful ball of light and everybody has their own particular shards and we're all contributing to this wonderful life. So we just have to keep that in mind. That, uh, and again, keep that in heart uh, and to let us know that we are one and we're always in and around love. And I got, I guess at the beginning of the stay at home order, right around March, my cousin Julie started sending me videos and, and some information that I just hadn't, I hadn't looked at um, before that, but I had time. I was, all of a sudden, I wasn't seeing as many clients and I started looking at some things and she'd been researching a lot about all this deep state and cabal and globalist stuff. She'd been researching that for a long time. And when I started looking at all that, a lot more things started making sense to me that never did. Because I mean, honestly, Hollywood has never made sense to me. It's just weird. And so many things about how things were run globally did not resonate with me and my heart. And so for, for me, none of that was surprising, but the, 
the goal for me as more information came out was to not stay mired in, oh, this one's done that. And this one's, you know, this one's been hiding all these bad things they've done or whatever. When it comes to like politically or religious leaders or Hollywood people, I just feel like people may go down a wrong mental path of getting all caught up in what's not important right now. What do you have to say about that? Right. Uh, we have to make sure again, we're all one. So everyone has their own experience uh, here on planet earth. We're all here to learn about love. Uh, some people may make choices we don't agree with. That's okay. Uh, remember, they're just like another cell on our body, and we're all one body. So we have to understand that they are creating their reality. Uh, we just have to make sure that our reactions to a particular reality uh, does not affect us in a way we, w we don't want it to. Uh, we have to make sure as shamans of Aloha that we are not affected by something that happens outside of us or something that someone else does, or something that someone is, or, or what they promote, uh, because those are things outside of us. Uh, we have to view that as this reflective, or this reflection, and have to understand that if we have this emotional response to something, uh, good and bad, so to speak, uh, we have to understand that's what's within us, and that's what we want to focus on, not on why these people are doing this, what are they doing, why are they doing this, that, why don't they think like I do? I mean, oh my God, if we stay in that 3D matrix, uh, we'll never get out of that. We're, we're like a, a rubber ball bouncing around, and it just, you know, it's like, if we do that, we have awakened, imagine we've awakened to this reality, and what do we do? We wake up, we run into a wall and we knock ourselves out and we fall back asleep again. We wake back up, we run into the same wall and fall back asleep. So we don't want to repeat that cycle. We want to understand everybody has the reality and we just want to make sure that we know who we are within. And that's Aloha. Really good point. Because I feel like there's two different things, being aware of what's going on and then being all up in it and emotional about it like that's that's two very very different things because we want the awareness so that we can take action and we can be of assistance where we can but that's a whole different thing than like say when i started really knowing more about the human trafficking and the children and and things like that when more of that came to my attention there was this 3d downward spiral of like I have to go get them. Like, where are they? You know, like, I, I want to go get them all now. And then zooming back out to like, wait a minute, I do make a difference in one child's life. And I got to be real present in what my manifestations of the world that I've created around me are, because it's not that I haven't manifested to be there to, to do that for those kids. So I would love for you to talk about that. Because I know people could be watching there's just countless hours you can spend watching videos about all this stuff, but to really just sum up what actionable steps can people take to make the world better if their heart hurts, like when they find out about this stuff? Well, good question. Uh, I think, uh, and we received some questions too, uh, uh, and a good general place to start with that would be, uh, like you mentioned, what is the deep state? what is the cabal, or uh, it also goes by uh, the New World Order, the Illuminati, so it has lots of different names. Uh, but just know that uh, we wanna make sure that we get the bigger picture of everything. If we stay too focused, we get too caught up in that 3D matrix. Yeah, we don't, we don't have this full picture of it. So we can't understand what are the things that go on around it. Uh, in police work, that was called the totality of the circumstance or the experience. Right? So we, we want to make sure that we understand something from the bigger picture. Uh, we, uh, that way we don't focus on this, uh, uh, what is it, the micromanagement of things. Right? So uh, if we understand what the cabal or the deep state's agenda is, well, that's very easy. It's control. And how do they do that? Well, you know, uh, the story is that, that they do that through the Federal Reserve, the money. Or they do that through the royal family of England or they do that uh, through the Vatican, right? And, and I say Vatican, so my Catholic friends, uh, remember just because uh, our leaders may be doing things, that should never take away from our faith. 
our belief in our belief in Christ, the, the belief in Christ's message of you know love one another as I've loved you. So, so when we're dealing with with folks like like that, I mean, what can we do? Uh, well, the one thing we can do is uh, in November uh, make sure we vote. So that's one of our rights as an American, and we want to make sure that we vote for the platform that's going to address what it is we're concerned with. So who is speaking about, for the, in this instance, the, uh, uh, the child uh, sex slave trafficking? Okay, who's addressing that? Well, right now, our president is addressing that. He is very, very into the, the child trafficking arrest and making sure that we bring that to some sort of conclusion. And of course, that, and remember, when we zoom back, that is a big business for the cabal, the deep state. Because not only are these folks involved with this, but also once they get involved with it, and there's videos of them with these acts, uh, well, you know, they're, they're on film now. So now we have this blackmail thing that now they have to do what the deep state wants them to do. So that's why you have your Hollywood actors. You know, we see them come out during a, uh, whether it's the protests or some, some sort of a social disturbance or difference, you'll see the Hollywood actors and celebrities come to the forefront. And of course, they're giving their speeches, they're giving their talks, well, they're made to give that because they're being threatened. I understand that. Uh, you know, they'll have to deal with that later on, how, they, how they've handled it. So what we can do then is just make sure, first of all, we have the love within us. That's the major thing, because if the love is not within us, then everything else is gonna be awry. Okay? So have the love within us. And now how do we do that? Well, that's why you're here on earth. You've got to figure out how to do that. So you go to classes, you have teachers, you read books, you talk with other like-hearted people. Uh, you make sure that your thoughts are pure, pure loving, aloha-filled thoughts. You know, make sure that as you think about something, try to get another side of this. Why would somebody do that? And what, where is the love? So if we can just look for the love, oh, we'll find it right away. Yeah. Well, I, I know that I speak for a lot of people like me when I, I say I can't believe how distorted information is because I did not vote for Trump. Um, my household was divided peacefully because we, um, we allow each other to express and, and live the way that we see fit. And I am all about social justice. I'm all about equality in the environment. And so I cannot believe that I would even be considering voting for Trump. And so I wanted to speak to that because I know there's a lot of people out there like me that have not seen the love in him. And I'm starting to see another side of that. I'm starting to see another angle, but I'm still, my heart is so for the people who want social justice and equality and environmental things and how skewed the information that we received for me to go and make my vote and to feel good as good as I could about that vote. Oh, that's so heavy. Like I, I want to talk about that because I can hear all those people like, but, but, but why is he saying aloha? And then he's saying, you know, vote for Trump. Like for someone like me, that would have seemed very contradictory. And that's why I'm brave enough to talk about it because I'm always willing to be wrong. And I'm always willing to look at something from a different angle. And I want you to speak to those people like me that um, haven't really been a fan, haven't really been a fan up to this point. Okay. Uh, well, I'm controversial as it is. I mean, I'm Korean American with a Southern accent. I mean, when you see me, when you see my face and you hear the words come out, it just doesn't pick. So, you know, I'm just, I'm the enigma thing. So anyway, yes, Trump and Aloha. Uh, well, let me give my big perspective on that. My filters for this 3D experience this lifetime, I am a warrior. Now, what does a warrior mean? Does that mean a warrior is fighting? No, that's, what, that's the only thing, our only definition of warrior, we've been taught that. No, a warrior is about peace, right? It's command presence, walking into a space, walking into an area, and just because you're there, the calm and the love you have within actually provides calm and the love to make everything peaceful. 
So that's what a warrior does. Now, imagine if some of us know that we are spiritual warriors. That means everything that we do, we make sure we have the calm, the peace, the healing, so that wherever we go, that's what we're projecting. So now, as a warrior, I am trained to see where danger exists because I am a protector. That is one of my earth superpowers that we talked about in the mystery school. So protecting is one of my major three superpowers. And through my uh, protection, I'm able to see what feels right, what feels safe, what feels calm, and what just doesn't make sense. So when we start to look around, and remember now, I've said this before, I voted for Obama twice. Uh, I'm a, you know, when I say I'm a conservative, you know, I'm, I'm actually a very liberal conservative, if you can imagine that. And I imagine most of us kind of trade that line. Most people are moderate. I mean, that's the majority of Americans. You know, there's conservative liberals and liberal conservatives. So that, that's where we are right there in the middle. So, and, and myself, I cross that line. I go back and forth. There are many things uh, on the liberal side of life. That's what I prefer. Uh, and then, then again, there's many things conservative I prefer. So being a warrior, then, I notice where the danger is. And that's what I see now after voting for Obama and seeing what's going on with the uh, Federal Reserve, what's going on with the control around the world, the constant wars. Okay, why is this happening? Somebody is making this happen. So who is that? So when you start looking around, and you certainly aren't going to get this on mainstream media, right? because mainstream media is owned by the deep state. My goodness, we all know that for now. And if you're wondering, well, how can that be? Well, just imagine, do you hear me, Main Street media say anything nice about our president? How can he, over a three and a half year period, how can there not be anything nice to be said about the man? Nothing. It doesn't matter what he does. He just passed this wonderful pharmaceutical bill. He just threw the gauntlet down in the sand to the pharmaceutical companies. You're going to have to get in touch with me by 12 o'clock, August 24th. You're going to have to talk to me, or we're going to invoke the most favored nation, of the, which is a policy with the Federal Trade Commission. And we're going to have to, we're going to start paying for pharmaceuticals at the lowest price that other countries are paying for. I mean, look what he's done for that, how that's going to help out so many people. But yet, do we hear anything about that? No. And, and that was just recent. So think about all the executive orders he passed, everything he's done. Uh, just incredible things he's done for jobs, bringing companies back to America. Now, how did the companies get gone from America? It was the deep state. So through all the existing presidencies before Trump, remember actually ever since uh, John F. Kennedy, and, and, and for those Democrats that are John F. Kennedy Democrats, remember, he was trying to take on the cabal too, the deep state. He just didn't have the support that President Trump has now. Uh, and of course they killed him and then killed his brother. Right. and supposedly killed his son. So they wanted to make sure that that was wiped out. So what did everybody do? They stopped fighting the deep state because you fight the deep state, you end up dead. Right. So the deep state then has caused all this conflict all around the world. They are in every part of our lives. But then I see President Trump come in. And what really convinced me uh, on the inauguration day, if you'll go back and play that tape, just put it in YouTube, and I want you to see about, I think it's probably less than 10 minutes into his speech. You see the military folks come in on the stage right behind him and stand right there. And it was like, oh my God, the military is for President Trump. And I knew at that point, that means we're going to be okay. Because the good guys are now on the president's side. And we know that the president cannot be bought. Because remember, he beat out 16 other professional politicians in those debates for the Republican nomination. How can somebody who's not even a professional politician come in and beat professional people? My goodness, he wiped the floor with them and got the nomination. And now we look at what he's doing. Remember, uh, if you go back, and I know mainstream media didn't cover this, and, uh, but there are videos on social media. Uh, within the first six months of the presidency, he started his worldwide tour, right? He went to Saudi Arabia. Uh, he goes to England. He goes to all the Asian countries, the major Asian countries. He goes to Europe. 
he gets all the world leaders together and lets them know that America is now first. And everybody is now supporting Trump. This is a worldwide effort. We're just not hearing about this on mainstream media. Uh, social media, if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be getting any of the news. So I invite you to find uh, some way to view social media to see what the rest of the world is thinking. Uh, so, well, I didn't chase too many rabbits. Now, what was your question? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm, I've, I've, I've had two strokes. I'm, I'm working with it. It's just so much. I, I just love sharing the perspectives, and it is a lot. And I know we can't sum it all up for everybody in one nice, neat little conversation and say, "Here it is." You know, it's it's really back to feeling. You know, and and not, I guess, not allowing ourselves to be manipulated through you know like all that mental all that mental energy that's coming at us in every single way in every moment getting back into our heart space and not in reaction yes that's it and uh and, and just look at what he's done i mean try to go beyond the stories that main street media is not reporting because they're not they're not going to tell us anything good that president trump is doing nothing not one thing so I can imagine if that's my only way to view him, my goodness, I wouldn't vote for him either. I mean, remember, he didn't become a racist until he became president. My goodness, he's done so much when he was a non-politician. Uh, he's received many awards for who he is. So uh, he's a businessman. And the thing is, he knows how to run a business. He's a billionaire. So he knows how to cut costs. He knows how to bring jobs in. Uh, oh, and reference to jobs, the reason why so many companies of America had left America, because that was the deep state's plan, to totally break down America so that uh, UN troops could come in, they would be our police, uh, the deep state would own everything, we would be a socialist state, and if they can take down America, then the rest of the world is theirs. We're the only thing in the way, America is the only thing in the way of the deep state taking over the world. However, it's too late now because too many world leaders are on President Trump's side if you'll just watch all the other social media outlets. So think about everything he's doing. Look at all the executive orders he's passing. And the Supreme Court has given him carte blanche to do the executive orders from this recent case. So that's why uh, even though Congress may not be able to pass the bills that he wants because of the political mess that's going on, he can just do executive orders and he can make new laws make new policies, and he's doing this all for Americans to keep us free. So as a warrior then, I see where that danger is coming from. I see the danger of the deep state. And so I wanna make sure that I support the platform that's going to keep us free. And right now there's one platform that is not doing that. One platform has totally lost to the far left. Uh, the JFK Democratic Party no longer is existing. And, and I wish, that we can bring that back because we need, as Americans, we need the liberal and the conservative side. We need that in our politics. We need that in our lives. And right now, the liberal side is totally being taken over by a socialist agenda. And unfortunately, it looks like the only way the Democratic Party is gonna be saved, it's actually gonna to have to be saved by the conservatives, which is okay. Because remember, the bigger view is we're America. That's what America is all about, this unity. So uh, we just have to make sure that you support the platform during this political season with the person that best keeps America free. So who's doing that? I mean, one thing you can notice that, why is it that we're having all this violence in our big cities? And who's running those cities? Why is that not being stopped? You know, here in North Carolina, we're, we're okay. I mean, we, our, our folks are taking care of things. But why in the big cities? Why is that allowed to continue? Because that is definitely not free America. That is total socialism and anarchy. And, and these people are not even from those towns. Uh, so why are we not doing something about that? Now, you have to ask yourself, who is allowing that to happen? And who's trying to do something about that? So just notice what's going on. Notice the big picture as we step back. Which platform is supporting freedom for all Americans? And that's what we want to focus on. And we, we couldn't have had diff more different backgrounds because you were in the military, you were um, a law enforcement officer and served. And I grew up 
not being allowed to vote and not being patriotic at all. That was what was instilled in me to not be patriotic. I've never saluted the flag because it's just not something you start to do as an adult <laughs> if you've never done it. So Steve and Austin have been with me several places and events and they're like, why aren't you saluting? Why aren't you, you know, why aren't you saluting the flag? And I'm like, I don't do that, you know, because so much of our life is what we're conditioned into. But I think you and I both hold, hold this so true to our hearts that when you live in shamanic principles, it's all about tearing all that down, you know, te tearing down the conditioning and you don't just do stuff anymore how you were raised when you wake up and when you live as a shaman. So it's been my responsibility to myself to learn about all this stuff, to learn about what, what it means to be a patriot and how I feel about that versus just feeling like I'm just a human being. Like I remember my dad used to change the words to proud to be a, a, an American. And I'm sure a lot of people were not like this at all, but he would change the words when I was little to proud to be a human. And he'd say, you know, <laughs> God bless planet earth. And they don't, the way that I was raised, they don't believe in any allegiance to, to any man-made institution. So I say all that to you to ask you, like for people out there who are more, in that heart space that I always grew up in, who almost felt like it wasn't spiritual to be patriotic. How do you put all that together? Because I do understand what you're saying about from a shamanic perspective, there are times to be in the masculine energy. There are times to be a warrior. And I get that now. You can't always be gentle, warm, fuzzy. If you're living life in a balanced, masculine and feminine kind of way right yes yes exactly and, and uh you know again if we can keep the big picture in mind that we live forever uh, that we're very loving and love is always around us and in us we, we cannot get away from love because it, love is in every atom in the universe for all of time and, and then we do it again over and over and over throughout eternity so if we can just remember that we're all one and if we can learn from one another that uh, if there's something that we don't like or if there's something that we love, well, that's a reflection of what's within us. And use that as a, as a learning point, as a place to have a choice point to establish that framework within you that, yes, I like that. Well, I may not like that. So why did that cause some sort of emotional upheaval in me? So where does that live inside of me? Where did that come from? You know, that's the old... Uh, grassroots we talk about uh, or the grass ropes rather that we talk about you know uh, the story is that uh, in india when they tie up little baby elephants they put the grass rope around it at night so it doesn't run off and, and well when the when the elephant gets to be a, a full adult they do the same thing so it doesn't run off at night and uh, and you're thinking this elephant is i mean carrying boulders tons of material and wood and everything this little grass rope would be nothing but but it was raised that way to think that the grass, grass rope was confining, so it doesn't break away. Yeah. Of course, then again, maybe they're very intelligent and they just like being there in the camp, doing their thing too. So, so we have to make sure that if we have those grass ropes in our, in our existence, make sure we're aware of it for one thing, and then make sure we know why we believe that and try to find a way to understand that in this totality of circumstances, the big picture. If we get too mired down on the minute things, I mean, we'll never get out. I mean. But we, we have to get out. Remember, it's just like, uh, you know, when we do anything, if we just stay focused on one little thing, it's like that project takes forever because we don't see this, the, the bigger picture here. Oh, no, no, I, I'm getting very close. I just, another step forward, another step forward. So just keep that in mind. That, and the same thing for our spiritual life. And make sure we understand that it's all about love and that love starts with us. So if we can use that as a framework, everything else falls in place. If we understand that everyone else is me and I'm everyone else, uh, like the Maya say, I'm another you, you're another me. So. I like that. One of the questions that came in was about the deep state, if that was extraterrestrial or humans, since you hear that it's just a very small group of people 
that control that that have controlled the planet for a while and what do you have to say about that well some people are probably going to take me off their christmas card list after this so we're really getting to the deep end of things uh just remember that uh from a 3d perspective you know everybody has a boss right so let's say uh let's say the deep state okay we often hear about the rockefellers and the Rothschilds. they're part of the federal reserve makes up one part of that deep state right the money part well you know they have a boss too uh, supposedly there's the families that live on earth here uh 13 that's kind of a magical number 13 families that kind of run them so so they have a boss and then we hear that there may be extra dimensional beings who are in charge of those folks and of course that goes back to our history as humans uh, you know where did we come from how did we get here who are the people that incarnated with us on mother earth this time so that we could bring all this beautiful harmony together uh, so we could uh, come around to understanding that we're about to go through this wonderful ascension to 4D or to another density of love. Because right now we're in 3D. And that comes from the uh, raw material or the law of one material. So, so our goal is humanity is moving to 4D. That's another uh, density. And Mother Earth is going to move too. So we will not be on Mother Earth in 3D. It will not be inhabitable. Well, she's going to be in 4D. So uh, what happens if we decide that we're going to incarnate in another 3D experience? We didn't do our work that we wanted to do. We'll have to repeat 3D again. We have to repeat that grade. So we'll just go to another existence, another planet somewhere, and that's what we'll do. Uh, so with the deep state then, when we think about extraterrestrials, well, sure, they're, they're around. We know they're around. I mean, we have angels. We have beings from all over. I mean, uh, when we talk about all the science fiction, Star Trek and all that, where do we think those ideas came from? I mean, somebody just didn't pull that out of a hat. Uh, you know, actually those folks were involved in the meetings right after World War II, uh, right? We all hear the stories of uh, Gene Roddenberry. He was part of those stories in World War II with the secret space program and, and, and all the little secret stuff that Eisenhower, President Eisenhower had to face with. Uh, because uh, one thing if you'll think about uh, President Eisenhower, the, his very last day in office, I think, if you'll just uh, pull that up on video, he talks about the military industrial complex, and that's the deep state. Right? And remember, President Kennedy was the president after Eisenhower. So that's what he was going up against, the deep state. And of course, we know what happened with him. So when we talk about the extraterrestrials, uh, remember, they do exist because life exists everywhere. I mean, we can't say that they, they're not real. It's just that our people in charge are not letting us know about that right now, but they've actually been working with them since uh, the 1930s. Uh, we've all heard about how Hitler was able to make the advances he made because of the extraterrestrial influence. Uh, and we've all heard about Antarctica. You know, if you haven't heard about Operation High Jump, 1946, I think is when it was, that's when the U.S. Navy took an armada to Antarctica to find out why the Nazis were there. Well, that didn't turn out too good for the U.S. Navy. So if you look up Admiral Byrd's responses, now this is in black and white. <laughs> this is a long time ago. We're talking about you know, the 40s. So if you look at his responses, that it did not turn out well for the U.S. Navy. So what was that all about? Why did we not learn about that? How was it not good for the U.S. Navy? We just won a war war. So how is it the US Navy did not win that particular conflict? So that kind of gets glazed over. Uh, so yeah, the ETs are here. And remember, uh, you can connect with them. Uh, again, they're just like other people. It's just they're on a different vibration. And just like we're on here. You're vibrating at your home and we're vibrating here. So we're not side by side and we're connecting. Again, what connects us is the love, it's the heart. You know, this is our cell phone here. I mean. Uh, if we can connect to the heart, my goodness, we can connect with life anywhere and everywhere. So I would, uh, I would encourage you, actually invite you to make contacts if you have it. And, and there's plenty around. I mean, we often hear about the Palladians. We hear about the Arcturians. Uh, we hear about the Syrians. We hear about the Hathors. So these are folks that have been in our, our history for quite a while. Uh, those who've had the, uh, 
Reiki classes with us, you know, we go over the Arcturian influence and the Hathors, uh, because in the, uh, you know, those of you who are Reiki people, uh, you know, uh, Mikao Usui, the, the temple he went to in Japan, you know, there's a little sand <clears throat> monument there uh, at the temple, and it represents the star beings that came millions of years ago to that area. So my goodness, where'd that come from? Yeah. So the ETs are here. They're here, there, they're everywhere. They've been around uh, a lot longer than the human race has been around. Uh, but remember, this is part of our, our evolution as humans. Uh, we're going through this wonderful dimensional density evolution into love and light, but also we're becoming universal galactic citizens. I mean, we're going to have a seat at the table and, you know, I want to be there for, the, for this or you know, be here for that, wherever we're going to be. I want to be there. And that's my plan. So, uh, so I'm doing all I can to make sure I stay in Aloha consciousness because I want to be picked. When it's time to go, I'm going to say, coach, put me in because I want to be there, wherever that's going to be. And there's nothing to be afraid of. I remember you saying a long time ago, there's dirt bags on every realm, just like there's good, <laughs> there's good loving beings on every realm and there's dirt bags on every realm. And that's kind of just the way the universe works, but there's no, there's no other. When you have all that personal responsibility and accountability for how you're showing up as a citizen of the universe, there's no, there's no real reason to be afraid, right? Right, no, no reason to be afraid, even here on earth. You know, you just remember, everything's gonna be okay. It doesn't matter who wins the election. It doesn't matter even if we have a libertarian come in and win the election, it doesn't matter. We will be okay. And the reason is because we, we're in love. We're in love with who we are, we're in love with the world, we're in love with the galaxy, the universe. Oh, my goodness, nothing is going to go in any other way uh, that would affect us in, in a bad way. Because remember, we create everything. So create peace, love, and harmony. Create love. Uh, that's up to us. And that would even go for a virus as well, wouldn't it? That virus is not other. Like whatever's out there, that, that whole fear of other, you know, where it's going to get you, you know, like what, whatever it is. Not that there's not suffering and not that there's not illness, but one of the other questions that came in is, is the deep state and the virus connected? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, now, when we, again, step back and look at the big picture here and think about what this virus has done, it has shut down the entire planet. Okay. So who could have done this? Only the people who thought they were in charge of everything were able to do this, and they did. However, they did not count on the resiliency of the human body. My goodness, the love, the peace, the joy, the mechanism, mechanisms we have within us for healing is just astronomical. So when we think about this virus as opposed to any other bacteria or other viruses, remember, create health and well-being. And that way it doesn't affect you. Okay. Uh, so as far as, again, we don't want to have fear energy. Oh, my God, I got to wash my hands a hundred times. I can't touch people, can't talk to people, can't go to church, can't do this, can't do that. It's all fear energy because when people have the fear energy, uh, they're very easy to be subdued. And that's exactly what the plan is. However, they didn't count on Mr. Donald J. Trump because this man is not part of that system. He knows exactly what's going on. If you can remember in Star Trek, when Spock was playing like that three-tiered, that 5D or 3D chess he would play, this man is playing 3D chess, and everybody else is on a checkerboard. They have no idea how he's able to do the things he's doing because he's five steps ahead of everything. They've already got this planned out. This has been in the planning since JFK. You can imagine that because there was an attempt by the military in the year 2000 to bring all this to some sort of close and under President Clinton, uh, he did sign a thing, it's called NASARA, uh, if you wanna look that up, it's N-E-S-A-R-A, -A, okay? And, uh, and it's about the global financial reset. And uh, that was signed in 2000, but of course, when the cabal deep state found out that it was signed, well, guess what happened? 9-11 happened, 
deep state put us on notice once again. Not only did we kill a president, but now we're gonna fly airplanes into your two buildings. We are in control. That's what they're trying to tell us. But then 2016 comes along and all of a sudden we have a man who's not part of that system that's gonna dismantle that system one by one, step by step, and that's what he's doing. So when we think about being part of that, again, support the platform that is providing the liberty and freedom, not only for America, but for the entire planet. Because that's why we're here. And as shamans of ascension and Aloha consciousness, that's what we'll be aware of. How does this affect the Aloha? What policies are being invoked that are going to be good for everyone? Not only just for America, but for the whole planet. Because we're on this path of ascension. We're, we're going there, and it's time. Uh, you know, according to the Ra work, we have three 25,000 uh, year periods. Well, we're at the end of that. So we're at the end of a 75,000 year period. And at every end of the 75,000 years, uh, something happens. People are able to make ascension into the next density, or they have to repeat that density until they learn the lessons that they've chosen to learn. Now we all have to be somewhere. So don't think that, oh, I messed up. I didn't do my work. Well, that's okay. We live forever. So you didn't pass third grade this time. That's okay. You'll pass third grade next time, right? Because we've got to be somewhere. And there's many of you, uh, Evangeline being one of them, uh, you're actually going to go back to your own home density. So you're, you're actually beyond 4D. You're, you're probably 5D or 6D. And so you've come back here to be a teacher and a healer. And, and I imagine many folks that we're acquainted with are in the same, same shoes. So, so you'll go back to your home density. If, this is a big if, you do not get caught up in 3D. If you get caught up in 3D, all that work you did for all these millions of years to get to 5D and 6D, what happens is evidently you, you didn't learn the lessons you thought you did because you got caught up in the quagmire of the 3D matrix, all the emotional uh, heaviness. And that's what's happened. And so what's going to happen is if you stay there and you stop being of service to other people and you, and you begin being service to self and because you're so entrenched with this emotional uh, involvement, uh, you're going to reincarnate into 3D somewhere. And again, we've got to be somewhere. So, but it's just, I would like to go back to my home density if I could. I wouldn't want to have to go through another few million years to, to make that trek again. Life works better when we serve others here. That's what I have found. That's when things work well. And I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on all that. And that's really why I wanted to have this conversation is for the people that maybe did come here to serve and they feel gentle and they feel just a bit out of place when it comes to like all oh, the fighting and the sides and the, you know, I'm on this team and this camp and over here and, and you get some people like me that are just like, Whoa, like what, what, what is all that? You know, can't we just, can't we just love each other and look at this from all, all vantage points. So I know we've got some more questions. That might be a good place to start part two. Does that sound good to you? Yes. That sounds wonderful. All right. To be continued. Aloha.